Okay, 2014 Subaru Impreza. Uh, this is the version two. It's a linear Tronic CVT version two. Uh, and the code that I'm getting is P2764. Just like on the last video that I did with uh, version one, it's the same code. Uh, lock up control solenoid circuit low. Okay, now, and the video that I put out with version one, the valve body was on the bottom. So you drop the pan filter and then the valve body, drop out the valve body. This, on this version, Linear Tronic, the valve body actually is on the top. So you would have to take some stuff apart on the top uh, to expose the cover, take the cover off and the valve body's right there. We actually had an emergency job to do because the uh, gentleman that owns the car is actually from New Hampshire. So he is here for whatever reason he's here for, and all of a sudden this code pops up, the car's in fail safe, it's not shifting right, and he came recommended here. So we had to do this uh, quickly, so we diagnosed it as the problem, which I kind of knew as soon as I saw the code, because I remember we've had a few of these already. Uh, still very common, uh, version one and version two. Um, so the valve body happened to be in stock at my local uh, Transtar brand, so we were able just to swap it out. It's not that bad to do. Uh, honestly, it takes about two hours and set him on his way. So I still have the valve body because I do have to return that as a core. But again, the valve body is located on top. Uh, it is covered, so there's a couple of covers, um, maybe soundproof covers, whatever they may be, on the transmission that you'll either have to move out of the way or there's a couple of bolts, you can unbolt the covers and move them out of the way. And on the top, uh, the, the, um, the intake tube or the snorkel tube with the air box, uh, the front of the air box would have to come off. That whole setup on the Subaru would have to come off. Uh, there is a dog bone mount right over the cover. Uh, that'll have to come out and there's a bracket, uh, I think on the engine. Uh, may may not have to come out, but it may give you a little more room, just a couple of bolts. We took that out as well. Uh, against the firewall, there is a bracket that's welded to the firewall that cannot move, and going across the top is an AC line, which really is not in the way. It's really, it looks, it, it, it's actually a lot easier than it looks, because when I was looking up labor, they just give you a couple hours to do, and I says, wow, well, I said, if that's the case, it, it can't be that bad. So we started looking into it and taking things apart. Before we knew it, the, the cover was exposed um, and we were able to get this valve body out. So the first thing that we did, the, the electrical connector comes through the cover. So we got ourselves a wiring diagram. Uh, we saw which one we, uh, we had to get, uh, where we had to ohm the solenoid. And again, it was for circuit low. So we ohmed it as soon as the guy had got here and it's supposed to be about 13 ohms and the solenoid was uh, 7. So we wanted to let it cool down because it was still, you know, very hot to work on. So we wanted to let it cool down while we were waiting for the valve body anyway. Uh, so by the time we got it, we brought the car back in. It was pretty much cooled down. We owned it again. We had 1.8 ohms when we should have 13. So we proceeded to take the cover off. Uh, probably about um, maybe eight bolts or so. I don't I can remember the actual count of holding the valve body in. You got a couple of the lineup bolts and then you have your other bolts. Um, and we torqued those, took them out, we torqued them down to, uh, geez, I forget the spec. It had to be, um, I think it was about 89 inch pounds. I might even need a swivel socket to do some of the bolts in the back, but again, it really, Totally was not a problem. It was very, very nice jobs. Went, everything went very smooth. Uh, so I have the valve body here, and when you lift the valve body off, there are a couple of O-rings. I'm going to show you where they are, but they are in the case, and you want to make sure that they don't come out of place and fall down. There should be two O-rings. No manual valve to hook up. You just simply lift the valve body off, set the new one in place, uh, bolt it down, and you got to hook the wire up, which is the you know, part of the internal harness before you put the cover back on. 
Uh, again, real, uh, real nice job. I had another one here, but the people did decline the repair, which would have been the first one. This would have been the second, but uh, this actually was the first one. So um, I think this is uh, still a fairly common problem, uh, like it was with version one, because we're still seeing this with the same code with this lockup solenoid. Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer on this valve body. We'll ohm out the solenoid, and I'll just show you again where the O-ring should be uh, in the case that you have to look for. You don't really even lose any fluid on this. Uh, when you check the fluid, you got to raise the transmission up. And on the left side, I guess about halfway back, you'll see the um, I believe it was an Allen key socket. I had the tech uh, check the fluid level, uh, car running, and we didn't even lose any fluid. You know, still came out of the uh, fill check plug, so we just put it back on and uh, cleared the code. And everything worked great. The guy was on his way. Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer with this, and I'll show you a couple things on this uh, Lydia Tronic valve body uh, version two. Again, called TR58. Okay, so here is the valve body that is on top of one of these linear tronic uh, units. All right, it's a nice little uh, valve body. And again, real nice job. Comes right off, no problems. All right, so when you take these bolts out, there's nine bolts that pull it down. All right, and this one here and here are the lineup. Then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Also, the bolts are a different color. Uh, the seven bolt heads are a different color. And then these lineup bolts, I believe, were the same um, as, as the, the regular bolts that hold the valve body together. But, you know, we went by the rebuilt valve body that we had to see which ones had to come out. All right, and the lockup solenoid actually is located right behind this, this plate. And you have your other solenoids, four more solenoids here. Uh, I did not uh, take the time to see what's what uh, uh, to identify them for you. Uh, but I'm sure I'll get another one of these because I wanted to show you um, what it looks like with the valve body out of the car and what we have to take apart and stuff like that. Okay, so when you do lift the valve body out, like I said, there's going to be two O-rings in the case. One O-ring is going to be here, you know, in the case for, for this port, and the other one is going to be here. All right, so that's really all you're going to see are just those two O-rings. All right, so just make sure that they're there, they didn't get stuck to the valve body, or they didn't uh, fall off and then drop down. All right, so we're just going to own this solenoid out real quick, and I'll show you where that, that particular solenoid is located because I have, was following the wire, and it's actually right here. So the wire, the lockup solenoid uh, is the white wire in this connector, and I believe on the harness end it is red and white. All right, so I'm just going to ground the valve button here so you guys can see. Uh, let me just get... Rig might despoil. All right, so again, it's the white wire right in the corner here. There we go. So that solenoid, that's 5.1, okay, and that solenoid should be 13. When we got the new one, we had like, you know, 12.8, something like that when we, when we checked it. So that is the lockup solenoid. And when, like I said, when we let this thing cool down outside and we checked it again, it was 1.8. See, now it's 2.1, and I'm on the same pin. So there's definitely something screwy here with this uh, solenoid. Not it's jumping around. Wow, 
5.3 to a 0.2, but bottom line, it should be 13. All right, and I apologize, I don't have the other one here. Uh, just to show you, compare the two, but under the circumstances, the guy uh, had to get home and we kind of had to push everything aside and, and get this thing done for him so we can be on his way. Okay, you got a ground wire here, ground wire here. All right, so here is the white wire, and I don't, I'm not sure you'll be able to see this here, but the solar light actually is is located right into here. That's the lockup solar light. That's where the white wire goes. So everything worked that well. This valve body is going to go back as a core. But again, um, real nice job. No manual valve to hook up. Just take the bolts out, pull the valve body out, put the new one in, uh, bolt everything back down, put the engine stuff back together. Uh, they really make it nice, uh, you know, fairly accessible uh, to do uh, in the car. All right, and again, this was a 2014 Subaru Impreza. Uh, didn't even have 100,000 miles on it. And we had a hard code of that P2764, just like I did with the other one, with version one. This is version two, uh, Lineatronic CVT. So again, the solenoid is not sold separately. You'd have to buy the entire valve body uh, which we did. I got a reman uh, from my supplier and uh, everything worked out good. All right, so again, TR580 Lineatronic CVT version 2. And the problem was the lockup solenoid circuit uh, was low. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.